The question for today, do big magnets work for tinnitus? The fancy way of asking this is, does TMS, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, work for tinnitus? So here's the headline. This is real. In the largest U.S. clinical trial of its kind, funded by the Veterans Affairs Rehabilitation Research and Development Service, researchers found that transcranial magnetic stimulation significantly improved tinnitus symptoms for more than half of study participants. Well, that sounds promising. This is part seven of eight in our series on electrocuting your otherwise or otherwise directly altering the electrical current in the brain to help tinnitus. So Mayo Clinic, in their article about transcranial magnetic stimulation, in that case for depression, says that they don't know how this works. And the answer today comes from three studies. I'll introduce them as we go along. Previously, we discussed how deep brain stimulation can directly reset the synchrony of the brain neurons and may help, but can also hurt tinnitus. And you do have to cut open the skull to do it. The transcranial magnetic stimulation, abbreviated TMS, is a less invasive way of resetting the neuron synchrony of tinnitus. It involves using powerful magnets. To give you an idea of the power, consider that clinical magnetic resonance imaging machines, MRIs, have magnetic powers up to 1.5 Tesla. Now I know most of you don't know what Tesla means, and I didn't either, um, but compare that. Whereas transcranial magnetic stimulation units, abbreviated TMS, give off magnetic fields between two and three Tesla. That's up to twice as strong as those big functional MRI, or those bug, big MRI machines. For another comparison, the Earth has a magnetic field of 0 0.00005 Tesla. So the MRI has a larger field because it's so much bigger, even though it's a little weaker than the TMS machines. So the TMS unit activates neurons by directing the powerful magnetic field through the skull and a few centimeters into the brain. The, uh, this magnetic field application is repeated with many pulses. For example, 2,000 in um, 2,000 pulses per session in one of our studies today, and 600 pulses per second. Uh, per session in another one of our studies. In the first study, we find a few interesting results. First, it didn't seem to matter which side they did the magnetic stimulation on. So what, you say? I thought they were specifically targeting a particular area of the brain. Well, the researchers intentionally chose the side randomly. It's worth noting that most of the participants did have bilateral tinnitus, but most of the non-responders also had bilateral tinnitus. The fact that the side of the brain treatment did not matter suggests that the transcranial magnetic stimulation effect is not related to its local influence on the brain. Hmm. So why is that? Well, I don't know exactly. So secondly, this study tested the predictive value of the tinnitus functional index, the TFI. It seemed to be predictive of who would improve with the treatment. So one of the eight parameters on the questionnaire was uh, it was really helpful, the most important one, the questions about hearing clearly and understanding. So that was the most predictive of whether they would respond. So hearing clearly and understanding, specifically understanding conversations. So that's good news. They found that those who started out worse, especially in this category of questions, responded better. One of the goals I'm progressing toward is a real quality predictive tool that will tell you both if you will respond and what therapies um, you're most likely to be able to use and which will help your specific tinnitus. So I have a name for this predictive tool. It's called the Brain Mapped, which stands for Brain Maladaptation Profile for Tinnitus. So this study added to that tool by identifying one of the profile characteristics that responded best to local brain therapy. So that's really good news and it's really helpful. Now, what about the results of using transcranial magnetic stimulation for tinnitus? Well, in that study, about half of the people treated improved at least 10%. Now, that's not too impressive. So let's take a look at another study using repetitive TMS to treat tinnitus. This one's from 2013. Here, 40 people with tinnitus were treated with TMS to the brain's auditory cortex. Half were treated on the same side, and half were treated on the opposite side of their tinnitus. 
all had tinnitus severity based, uh, based on the tinnitus handicap inventory or the THI questionnaire scores of more than 38 out of 100. So they were fairly bad off to start with. Um, so what were the results? Again, like the other study, the side of the stimulation didn't seem to matter, at least after one month. The people treated on the same side as tinnitus perception responded immediately, actually, whereas those treated on the opposite side improved gradually. So after one month post-treatment, both groups maintain improvement of about 10 points on the THI, which is about 20% improvement from where they started in this case. It's not too bad, especially for lasting improvement, although um, know that we can do better. So yet another repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation study on tinnitus was done in 2016. The unique aspect of this one is that they tried three different RAIN sites, one immediately after the other. They compared that to a single site stimulation and a sham stimulation. They stimulated the brain's left and right auditory cortex and the frontal lobe. The same part of the frontal lobe that we discussed as one of the main influencing brain regions in the last episode. The results of the research showed that after 12 sessions, there was about 10% improvement. Hmm. Well, not sure what to say, except that it was better than placebo, in this study anyway. They found that at 180 days afterward, the benefit was maintained mostly, mostly maintained by the single site treatment group and completely in the triple site group, and may have even improved a little bit to about 13% in that group. 13% is still not impressive, but it's worth noting that the placebo group was at zero improvement at 180 days. So what can we use now from this study? Well, you can look for a provider that will do transcranial magnetic stimulation on you. Expect a minimum of 12 sessions, costing $400 to $500 per session. Sometimes insurance will cover it. Below I'll give you a link to a list of some providers in the U.S. I personally do not use this, and the results don't seem to justify it. All right, what about future applications? Although the benefit was minimal, the results were significant to me because they were lasting. So the lesson to apply is that it seems that breaking the electrochemical synchrony of the physical neuronal structures in the brain may be an important key to long-term improvement. If we can add a more effective treatment in combination with something like this, we may have something useful. In the next episode is Brain Synchrony, the Wave of the Future, and is CR Neuromodulation Effective? I'd like to know your thoughts, so please leave a comment or request a re review of a particular research study. To stay connected to tinnitus research and therapy applications, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to be notified of new therapies and video postings, click the bell and subscribe to our email newsletter at tinnitusenergy.com. Thank you, and may God bless you.